Hello folks, in this brief lesson we're going to talk about market equilibrium. That's the point where demand and supply meet or where, where they equal one another. And quite honestly, that's where the market magic happens. So let's get into our analysis. I've put up a combined demand and supply schedule here. We're going to continue our analysis of the chocolate bar market. And all I've done here is taken a look at the price of chocolate bars, and then given that price, taking a look at what consumers want, that's quantity demanded or QD of chocolate bars, and then what producers are willing and able to supply for the market, that's the QS of chocolate bars. And based on that graph or that supply and demand schedule, I can create uh, this particular graph. So one thing that we want to note is this area that I've bolded here, this equilibrium area where the demand curve and the supply curve meet. That, that is where supply and demand equal one another. At a price of two dollars per chocolate bar, eight will be sold in the market in, in I guess this particular week. That is market equilibrium. That's also referred to as the market clearing price. That $2 in this case is going to be the market price of chocolate bars. For, so for you and me, that's what we're going to be paying. For consumers, uh, that's, what, that's the price that they're going to be, to be selling at. Um, the shaded in area that you see here, this box, is a revenue box. And uh, that's how we can figure out what the market sales would be. So we take the $2 price of chocolate bars and multiply by the 8 units that were sold for a total of $16. So our market revenue here would be $16. And that $16 would be shared among the firms that are a part of our market supply curve. Now, what happens when supplier demand in the market changes? Let's take a look. So the first thing we're going to do is see a shift in demand from D to D1. Maybe there has been um, a change in consumer tastes and preferences away from another type of candy and towards chocolate bars. We can see that the the market price has increased from two to three We've moved up the supply curve. We've seen a change in the quantity supplied. We've seen an increase in demand. And we have seen that the volume of sales in our market here has gone from 8 to 12. And then we've seen a change in market revenue. That would now be 3 times 12 for a total of $36, which again would be shared among the firms that are part of this market supply curve. So this is how we graph a situation where we've seen an, an increase in demand in the market and that changes our equilibrium price from EQ to EQ1. I'm going to erase that now and see what happens when we decrease supply. We've now seen a left shift of the supply curve from S to S1, and that we've seen a change in equilibrium here from EQ to now what I call EQ2. And it looks like our new market price is going to be, oh, it looks like it's about $2.60, and our market uh, uh, has sold a few fewer chocolate bars. It looks like it's sold uh, seven chocolate bars. So this is how we graph a situation where we've seen a decrease in supply and the impact on the market here is to increase the market price and to decrease the amount of quantity sold. In our next video we're going to take a look at what happens when we've got simultaneous changes in supply and demand. I'll see you soon.